I think we can all agree that there's a lot of old-fashioned habits, rules of etiquette, charm, and the like that could use a bit of a comeback. I see a lot of similar threads going through many of the complaints that women seem to have these days, mothers um, and families in general seem to have with this faster paced, technology filled way of life. And I think a lot of those could be solved by looking to the past, looking to the wisdom from those who've gone before us. Not everything new is better. Not everything that is perceived as progress or technological advancements are actually better for us as human beings. So today I'm gonna to share with you some old fashioned living habits some slower living habits that really need to make a comeback. One of the first things, and maybe it's because we're slowly inching into fall, but making comfort food. I feel like in our um, health craze that we tend to be in where people are always doing some newfangled kind of diet or eating style, we have sometimes lost our love and joy for food and eating. My favorite people in the world are people who love to eat and people who love to enjoy really good food. There are so many benefits to breaking bread with people in our lives and sitting down and sharing a delicious meal. But when it comes to comfort foods, those are foods that really kind of hit multiple senses, not just taste, but also smell. And they really transport us in time, maybe back to our childhood, back to some positive memories and I for one know that there are certain things that can be cooking in my kitchen and going on in my kitchen and it just brings me comfort to have those foods so bringing back the joy of comfort foods into our lives if your comfort food is like little Debbie's cosmic brownies okay maybe you don't want to do that too often but I really am thinking along the lines of like homemade tomato soup and homemade chili and uh, with some really good cornbread just things like that that maybe take a little more time to cook. There's a little more investment on our end to stew something or brine something or roast something. It's definitely a habit I think we need to bring back. Speaking on that same topic of comfort foods and the idea of breaking bread with those you love is the idea of eating together as a family. This is something that I feel like is completely lost on our generation and the ones after us because of how we have worked ourselves into a tizzy with schedules and sports and activities and after school and all of these things, it's actually not super common for people to sit down at the table and eat dinner together. Even though we are home together as a family all day, it is sometimes even hard for us to do this because everyone's got their chores and their different things going on. And it's something that I notice a huge difference in my family, our connection with each other, just taking the time to sit down and eat together. I realize that it's complicated and if you've got schedules and activities, maybe you can't do it every single night, but trying to work it in as many nights as you possibly can. Bringing back the idea of sitting down together as a family to eat a meal is a habit that used to be absolutely common and pretty much done every single night. And now I would argue it's probably far more rare than it is typical. And when you do sit down to eat with your family, slowing down to enjoy conversation, enjoy your food, somebody who kind of does life at breakneck speed sometimes, and sitting down to savor our food is another way that not only can we, well, help ourselves out in the, you know, sort of diet department if we're not shoveling food in our face. It makes me think of the scene from Renaissance Man, which is one of my very favorite movies, where the drill sergeant is going around while the guys are eating their breakfast, they're in the army, and he's like, eat, 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 we eat now, we taste it later. We don't wanna live our whole lives eating now and tasting it later. We want to savor our food, savor the conversation, savoring the togetherness of having a meal with people that we love. Maybe you are already doing all these things and you're like, Psh, this is not helpful to me. I'm already doing these things. That is fantastic, but I promise you, it's far less common than you think. Speaking of time, Time is truly, I'm, I will get emotional if I talk about this too much because my oldest child is 16 and a half and my youngest child is three turning four soon. Time is the most precious thing that you have. I see my time with my children slipping through my fingers like sand and it is, it's breaking my heart every single day because the thought that they are going to grow up and I have so many exciting things for the future, you know, being a grandma and visiting my kids and there's so much to look forward to, but it is so hard for me to let go of the idea that I have my whole family under this one roof together where I can protect all my little baby ducklings 
it's it's slipping through my fingers and well we could go to mama mia but we're not it's slipping through my fingers and it is so hard and if you are in the younger years of motherhood and you are in the trenches right now i want you to know how fast the time goes and i know everyone says that and you're like i can't savor it there's poop on the floor and goldfish everywhere i know i know but trust me one day none of that will matter you will look back and laugh at all of that so Time is the most valuable thing that you have with your children. Spend as much of it with them as you possibly can. You will not regret it. There's so many decisions in life that you can make that you might have regrets about, but being with your children, spending good quality time with them is something you will never regret. Rushing through life is no way to live life. If it means you need to remove obligations off of your plate, if you need to pull your kids out of a couple of activities, if you guys are all just overbooked and overstressed, don't rush yourself to death, okay? Pull, start saying no, pull out of things, back all the way back out and like slow entry back into things as you feel that you can. Don't go through life and think that you have to do this breakneck speed. It is not a requirement. That brings me to no more multitasking. I have spoken about multitasking and the evil, not really the evil. We all do multitasking in some ways, especially women and mothers. We can talk on the phone and stir soup and burp a baby and nurse a baby. We, we can multitask, but it's autopilot tasks. When you are trying to do something, achieve one task, the more you can focus on that one task, the better and quicker and more accurately you're going to do that one task. So the less that you can try to juggle a bunch of things all at the same time, the happier you'll be, the less anxious you'll be, the less stressed you'll be, the more you will actually get done. I know it sounds nuts, right? But studies have shown that when we focus on one thing really well, I'm so sorry, all I can think of right now is my dad saying not to half ace two things and then was it ron swanson later who said don't half butt put your whole butt i want you to put your whole butt into the things that you are doing the things that really matter the things you're trying to get done put your whole butt into it not half whole butt and you will get more done because you will be more efficient more effective it's nuts i know try it the next habit and this is one that i am trying desperately to do more of in my life. I have people in my life who do this really, really well. Blessing those around you in various ways. Looking for ways to, to bless people in your life, even strangers, right? Just friendly kindness when you're out and about. Our world has gotten a little bit blunted in our emotions towards strangers and a little bit of like, it's all about me and how I feel. We're starting to treat each other poorly we've lost a lot of decorum and manners that used to exist and it's something that i tell my kids like i can be in the worst mood ever i go through a drive through and i'm like hi how are you good i'm great and it's not that you're faking and stuffing emotions i saw a meme about this and i wish i could remember where it came from it's like no it's called manners like my mother raised me with manners now i'm from the south and my mother is a, a southern woman and she raised us with a lot of those values and rules of etiquette but whatever i'm feeling whatever struggle i've got going on i'm not bringing that to the stranger at the checkout at target or at the mcdonald's drive through or wherever you are i'm not bringing my stress and anxiety onto the stranger who has absolutely nothing to do with it and sort of on the flip side of that even if they treat me poorly, I'm not treating them poorly in return because it's manners. So this is one of those things that that's like a simple stranger blessing, but I'm talking about like even your relationships, your friendships, people you go to church with, um, bringing back the idea of like a supper club or a dinner club. So some little etiquette things like that, writing handwritten thank you notes or just handwritten notes that say, hey, I'm thinking of you, love you, miss you, how are you doing? I mean, we don't get positive mail these days. The truth is, is that if you're opening your mailbox, it is bills. Is there anything else that comes in the regular mail? I mean, we rarely receive letters or anything like that. In fact, I was recently going through a box of my old high school stuff from when my husband and I started dating, and I had a box this thick of handwritten letters. I have so many letters from him. And I think about my children dating and that's just not something people do. And it wasn't, it wasn't something people did a ton then either, 
but it was something that my husband and I did because for a while we lived across the country from each other and while we were dating, and so we would write to each other. So we have all these letters back and forth, and they're cringy, but they are special to me, and it's something that I think handwritten letters, handwritten notes, it's just such a touch that you know that that person cares that they took the time to do that. In today's fast paced world, technology world, those kinds of things are so meaningful. And like I said, handwritten notes, bringing someone a meal. I guess you could door dash a food or coffee to somebody, that's a, another nice thing you could do if they're not close enough. But I love sending people flowers, fruit baskets, um, if they don't live near me, just little things like that that aren't as common these days, I think carry a, a lot of meaning and they've always been meaningful gifts and thoughtful things, but even more so now when they are so rare. And in that same vein, thoughtful gifts, handmade gifts. This is again, something that I do think like has kind of waxed and waned over the years. I think with the Pinterest popularity, some handmade gifts, DIY things came back into fashion. And again, Pinterest is awesome for this, but there's so many wonderful, thoughtful, handmade gifts and items that you can give to teachers and stuff. You know, I've seen a lot of reels and shorts and stuff recently from people sharing like back to school, right? So if you want to be able to still do that, but it's far, it's so expensive. Again, some of these I see people putting together, they've got like a Stanley cup and Starbucks coffee and all that. And I'm like, that is a $50 gift. And if you've got eight kids like I do, that adds up very fast. Handmade gifts, things that People know that you put the time into, whether it's pre-made simmer pot mix that you've made for someone that they can just take home and pop on the stove and have the scent of fall or Christmas or whatever. Um, you know, obviously food is a little tough because people have eating restrictions if you're doing this for strangers, but that's why I love things like handmade soap, and um, again, like simmer pots, potpourri, maybe uh, like coffee mixes, pre-made coffee or hot chocolate mixes. There's so many ideas on Pinterest these days where you can give some really thoughtful, easy to make in bulk, handmade gifts, being able to think outside the box, but have it not be another layer of stress in your life. Uh, the habit of thoughtful handmade gifts is one that desperately needs to come back. Speaking of, making your own soaps and detergents. This is an old fashioned way of living that I think could save us all a lot of money. I recently made some laundry soap. I will link that video down below if you wanna see. I did both a dry recipe, uh, like a powder recipe, as well as a liquid recipe. It lasts forever and it comes out to being like less than a dollar a gallon, like 75 cents or something a gallon. It's so affordable. It's one of those things that was very common. Everything didn't have so many ingredients in it and things that we didn't know what it was and how to pronounce it. Um, it was pretty simple and we didn't overcomplicate it. And I, like everyone else, am grateful for many of the more modern products that have been created. Some of the stain removers, I just used one yesterday to remove makeup stains out of my vanity stool that I did not make myself. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to rescue it, but I did with my favorite stain remover. So I love products as well that work really, really well and can do more for me, but there are some very simple, basic household products that can get really, really expensive. It's kind of crazy. Price of those, I mean, $5 for one small bottle of multi-purpose spray is nuts. That's nuts. I am learning myself how to make a lot of these products. And again, I always tell you guys, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, a monkey can probably do it. But it's one of those things that is not nearly as hard as you think it is going to be. Not only will you be very proud of yourself, but you will also save yourself a lot of money and learn new skills all at the same time. Next is meaningful furniture in our homes instead of whatever is trending at the moment. I say this with two Ikea cabinets behind me. I have started to value and incorporate more of heirloom furniture, some older pieces, vintage antique pieces. Again, some people are just, they've always been like this, right? But one thing I do see is that I love home decor and if you follow those channels and those Instagram accounts and stuff, it can be really, you can feel like, well, gosh, I need this and that's a West Elm in our house and I need 
all of these expensive things. Some of my favorite pieces of furniture in my home are hand-me-down pieces of furniture. And let me tell you, they're the most durable, they last. Things are just made differently now than how they used to be. So being able to incorporate pieces from the past, pieces from antique stores, pieces from your family that are passed down if you want them in your home. Don't feel like you have to fill your home with a bunch of you know clutter simply because it's a family heirloom. But my mom recently gave me a secretary that I'm so excited to incorporate into my home. It belonged to my great grandmother. It is from the 1800s. It's absolutely beautiful. It has like curved glass in it. And it's one of those pieces that I would never be able to find anything like it currently made. When and where I can, I love to find good antique vintage pieces. It's not so much that I'm telling you, you have to have all these antique pieces in your home and you can't have anything new. I'm just saying that the idea that we the reverse of that the idea that we must have everything new everything that's trendy is what we have to fill our homes with that is basically something from a magazine and it's not actually livable um, that's one of the hardest lessons i've learned from home decor and how much i love it is that often what i love and what looks really beautiful is not at all functional and livable for my family and i spend more of my time screaming at my children not to touch things and freaking out than i do living and enjoying my home and I, for one, don't wanna live like that. Last but certainly not least is to live in the physical world and not constantly living in the metaverse, the online world. I, I utilize a lot of technology and a lot of the advancements that have come with technology, believe me, I am very grateful for those things. I can already see for myself kind of the dangers of that road and going too far down that road. And so it's become vitally important to me that I am raising my kids in the physical real world, making sure that not only are we enjoying good documentaries about things and watching something, a, a video or whatever, but that we're physically going and enjoying those places in real life. We're smelling them, we're feeling them, we're seeing them. I don't know, maybe we're not tasting places, but we're tasting food in those places. And I get it, okay? We can't all go to Egypt, right? We can't all go see the pyramids in Egypt. So in those cases, right, I'm gonna watch somebody's vlog of them visiting the pyramids because that's as close as I'll probably ever get. But when it comes to local museums and you know rivers and lakes and beaches and mountains and all of these cool places, animals, bugs, things like that, those are all things that we can very much find for ourselves in the real physical world. And it's something that I don't want us to lose. It's something that generations before us, quite frankly, didn't have a choice. Uh, this was the world that they lived in. And now that we have so many choices, I fear that we will lose our grip on reality and the physical world if we move every single thing to an online space, online relationships and communication and all of that. So grounding ourselves really firmly in the physical world is something that I think is very important and perhaps considered an old fashioned habit at this point that definitely needs to come back. I'd love to know if you have any old fashioned habits that you think need to come back. Share those with me down below in the comments and I will see you guys again very soon. Thank you.